Section 5.7, Enthalpies of Formation. An enthalpy of formation is the energy, is the change in energy for the reaction uh, in which a compound is made from its constituent elements. So if I were to have water, and water is in the free state at room temperature at in, as a liquid, so I would say making liquid water, I would have hydrogen gas, and hydrogen's in the free state as H2 gas, and oxygen gas, which is in the free state as O2 gas. So I would say O2 gas, and H2 gas yield H2 liquid water. And I can look that up in a book and find its heat of formation um, is equal to something. Okay, it's going to be probably negative something. Now look at the degree mark there after the H. All that is saying is that everything is in its standard state. So the most stable state of water at room temperature is not ice, it's liquid. So it's going to be liquid water. The most stable form of hydrogen is H2 gas. The most stable form of oxygen is O2 gas. There's other forms of these elements, but the most stable form at that point is its standard state, and that's all that the little, um, the little bubble represents. Heat of formation means what is the enthalpy change to make water from its from hydrogen and oxygen. That's what heat of formation is. So in any kind of stuff, any kind of reaction that you want to do, you can sneak and use all of these heats of reactions, heats of formations for all of the products, add them up together and end up getting the energy you need for the reaction you want. It's like making it yourself. It's kind of like a kit. You just use all the heats of formations to, you, to make whatever you're looking for. So this is an example. You see that it's room temperature, 25 Celsius. It's one atmosphere, so it's the amount what you would have in the lab. And it, there are books full of these, of every possible stuff that you can make. And it tells you how much energy is either consumed or released to make this stuff from its elements. So taking an example um, as acetylene, okay, acetylene is C2H2. So C2H2 is going to be uh, made up of carbon, which is um, not diamond, but it would be graphite. Because graphite is the form of, a form of carbon that's stable at room temperature, and then hydrogen gas. So so C plus H2 yields C2H2, and it gives you, for every mole, it's 226.7. Uh, and so that's what you're looking for. You're just, you're just saying, what am I dealing with? Now go up and look how much it takes to make this stuff, and that's the energy of formation. Let me tell you right away that the actual calculation of this propane plus uh, oxygen yields carbon dioxide which water is simple 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 it's pre-algebra math right at the end um, I'm just giving you some ideas of what of what in order for you to do it the easy way how that someone had to think through it to show you that it actually works so that you can do it the easy way so if I want to go from from propane plus five hydrogen for five oxygens to three carbon dioxides plus four waters. Okay, so I'm going from here to here. I don't know how to look that up. It may not be in a book. That reaction may not be anywhere. But what I can do is I can say, well, how do you make propane? Propane is made by carbon and hydrogen. Well, carbon is C. That's the, that's the most stable at room temperature. It's the most stable form of carbon is, is graphite. It's what's in your pencil plus hydrogen, and that's H2. Hydrogen gas is stable. So if I simply say, how do I make this? I make it by going from, I take carbon and hydrogen and making it, make it that way. Okay, this I didn't have to worry about because it's the same. Now, how do I make... I'm trying to get to carbon dioxide. How do I make carbon dioxide? 
Well, I'm going to take carbon and oxygen, and I'm going to make carbon dioxide. Well, I need to, I can look up how to make carbon dioxide, but I need three carbon dioxide, so I have to multiply it by three to get here. Okay, so now I've got carbon dioxide is what I need, but I need water. How do I make water? So I add, hy I add hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Okay, so that's why I had it have it here. So somebody worked out a big conglomeration of going up in a big circle so that you get the same place. Remember, it's a state function. I start here, I end here, so it does not matter. I can have a big ugly circle to get here. It, who cares? It's the same. What you're going to see is if I know how much energy does it take to make propane? How much energy does it take to make free oxygen? Well, this is zero because it's already O2. So I don't have to make O2 because O2 is already O2. So this is going to be zero. How much energy does it take to make carbon dioxide? I can figure that out. I'm going to multiply that by three. How much energy does it take to make liquid water from its form from H2 and O2? Well, I can figure that. I can look up that in a book, multiply that by four. And then I simply want the products minus the reactants. So it doesn't matter how complicated this is. When you do the problem, it's going to be really simple. Now, don't panic because there's Greek letters here. All this is saying is that you are going to add up. That's what the sigma means. You're going to add up all of the heats of formation of the products. So whatever the products are, look up in the book, how do you make that product from its, from its constituents? Like, like how do you make water from hydrogen and oxygen? Okay, whatever it is. And then that number times what is the, what is the coefficient in the balanced equation? Add them all up, and then that's the products that's on the right. Then you're gonna subtract and then you're going to add up all of the, the heats of formation of the reactants times the coefficient in the balanced equation for that. Okay, so hold your horses so that I can make some sense of it in a second. So here's the final calculation, and this is what you do, and it's not hard at all. You are simply going to say, if you, want to, if you have a balanced equation, and they ask you for the heat of, uh, the, what is the enthalpy change? And you scratch your head and go, well, who knows? How do I know what it is? Well, it's actually not hard at all. You are simply going to say, okay, I make sure it's balanced. So and I know how to balance the equation. So I've got a 1 to 5 to 3 to 4 relationship. 1 to 5 to 3 to 4. Okay, good. Now, what is my, go to the products. The products is on the right. Go to, in your in your book, and it's at, at the end of the the book in your appendix um, or in, in the end of the book you're going to have in a table how do you make carbon dioxide gas and you say okay it's carbon dioxide gas how do you make it well you're going to make it from carbon and oxygen well how much energy is does it does it take or release to make it look up that number Take that number, and it happens to be this number, 103.85. That's the, the heat of formation of carbon dioxide. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It's this number, negative 393.5. Take it and multiply it by 3 because you do the products first. So 3 times this number, which you look up when you looked up carbon dioxide. It came up with this number. You're going to add it to this number. This is liquid water. How, what does it take to get to liquid water? Look it up. It's in a table. To negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole. Multiply it by four moles because I've got four there. Okay, you're going to sum all this together. So you're going to add those together. That's the products. Then you're going to subtract. Now I need brackets because you're going to add all of the reactants together. This is one times whatever this is. You look up propane gas. It gives you negative 103.85 times one. And then oxygen gas is already a, like, it's an element. It's not made. It's not a compound. So you don't have to make it. It's already there. So it's a zero. So it's five times zero plus one times whatever this is. Okay. All added up. And you're subtracting that amount from the sum of three times this, what you look up, plus four times this, what you look up. 
So it doesn't matter. This could be an, the ugliest, awfulest, terriblest balanced equation with 16 parts to it. And it won't take you five minutes. You simply look up each one in a book, and they're all there. You multiply it by the coefficient. And then once you do, you take all the products first, and then you take all the, the reactants second, and you take the sum of the reactants and you subtract it from the sum of the products. And you're in the end will be the enthalpy change from the beginning to the end. Then you'll know, oh, this released energy or this sucked up energy. You'll know everything because it does not matter how I got there. I simply take all the steps that other people have done and steal them, and I can find out what it, how, how much energy it takes to go from here to here.